Hello and welcome guys. In this video, we are going to walk over a couple of examples from the integration management knowledge area for your upcoming PMP, which stands for Project Management Professional, or your upcoming CAPM examinations. So without further ado, let's jump right into the first question. So Larry is a project manager working on an internal project that is meant to improve his company's working conditions. He is currently on the project's planning phases. He is confused as to which knowledge area can help him make choices about tailoring the processes to meet the project objectives. He's turned to you for help. Which knowledge area will benefit him the most for this process? Purpose. Is it A, scope management knowledge area, B, integration management knowledge area, C, stakeholder management knowledge area, or D, cost management knowledge area? So at this point, feel free to pause this video, answer the question, and start the video again. We will be taking it up in just a second. Okay, guys, if you said B, integration management knowledge area, you are correct integration management knowledge area is the one that can help Larry the most with tearing, tailoring the processes uh, on his project to meet the project objectives. Integration is where you integrate all of the different things that's going to happen on your project into one place so that the project delivers upon its promise, it delivers upon its deliverables. Now let's move on to the next question. Tyler is a project manager working for a telecom company. He is halfway done his project when he discovered that he has not estimated enough time for some of the development work. He requested the extra work to be added to the scope statement and project schedule. The change control board approved the change. What should he do next? Is it A, update the schedule and scope baselines to reflect the approved changes, B, start doing the work, C, gather performance metrics on the work on the team's work so far, or D, manage quality. So feel free to pause the video at this point, answer the question, and start it again. Okay, so if you said update scope and schedule baselines to reflect the approved changes, you are right. So just because the change control board has approved the changes doesn't mean that you can start doing the work right away. This is because if you don't have your plan, then you shouldn't start doing the work right away. So the, what sh the first thing he should do next is to update his baselines um, with the new changes uh, taking place. And once he has updated this plan, uh, these baselines, he has a plan, then he should start doing the work. Let's now move on to our third question. Michael is a project manager working on managing the knowledge uh, management within his project. To do this, he hired an interim PMO resource to capture and document the knowledge that the project team and other stakeholders have. In addition, he is able to collect any emergent knowledge and instantly record them directly into the knowledge base. The captured knowledge is considered to be, is it A, tactic, uh, B, explicit, C, complex, or D, both tactic and explicit. If you said B, explicit, you are correct. Since Michael is capturing this data um, into words that he can share with others through a knowledge database, so he's codifying this knowledge, thus the correct answer is explicit. Let's go on to our fourth practice question. As a new member of an organization, Olivia is hired as a project manager for a new project and has asked her team to assist her in gathering data about different stakeholders. She has done this to understand their level of influence across the organization. While the team does not see the need for this, she insists that the data be gathered in order to plan communications properly and recognize both formal and informal power relationships. What is Olivia's strategy an example of? Is it A, strong networking skills, B, communication skills, C, political awareness, or D, stakeholder engagement skills? Again, feel free to pause the video at this point and answer this practice question.
If you said C, political awareness, you are correct. Since Olivia is trying to understand the power dynamics within her organization, who has power and what kind of power does the stakeholder have, and what does the stakeholder want to see on the on her project, and so what she's trying to understand when what she's using here is、um, political awareness in order to ensure that her project is a success. Now let's move on to our last example for integration、uh, management knowledge area. When is the best time to have a project kickoff meeting? Is it A at the beginning of the project, B when each deliverable is created, C at the start of each phase, or D when the communications management plan is approved? If you said C at the start of each phase, you are correct. So it's best to have a kickoff meeting whenever you begin a new phase, not just at the start of the project, because if you are you are on a very long multi-phase project, that might not be sufficient. So it's best to have a kickoff meeting whenever you start a new chapter or a new phase of your project. So I hope you found these practice questions helpful. Be sure to check out our other videos on practice questions from other manage and the knowledge area、um, for in the Pinbox Six Edition guide. And be sure to like this video and comment below with what answers you have gotten, or if you have any questions about any of these questions that we have covered.、Um, thank you for joining us today, and we hope to see you soon.